I was doubtful of how useful 3D printers could be. A few months in, and I had to spend an entire month fixing my printer's clogging issues. But once the printer was operational, I realized that it had a lot of potential, simply because of its one characteristic, which was its versatility. Because I worked with my printer, it taught me a lot more about myself. It gave me the ability to potentially create something that may help the world, maybe even giving me the ability to start my own business. I can even print things for half the market price, though that is a little bit more mundane. The best part is that you can do all that at home. Unfortunately, there is a good deal of negative coverage of 3D printing. 3D printed firearms, for example. If we decide to ditch 3D printing because of the wide negative coverage and also ignore what it can and does do, we may lose, or at least hinder, a great invention that started from humble origins. It was 1983 and Chuck Hole was working on prototyping plastic parts that had to be injection molded. This was a conventional manufacturing method, which required designing the mold, creating it, and then using it to make the part. If you got it wrong, which was not uncommon, then there's not much you can do except to redesign the mold and repeat. Other conventional processes had similar issues. A very arduous process, Chuck Hole thought. But what if we could put individual plastic layers together in a way so that it forms the shape that we want? That would make it much simpler and less time consuming. Well, fortunately for Chuck Hole, he is the inventor of 3D printing, though we just didn't know it yet. The 3D printing process is so elegant and simple to the point where anyone nowadays can manufacture plastic parts with a 3D printer at home. Additionally, files could be sent over the internet and easily printed. It also has a lower carbon footprint than other processes because of its simplicity and the fact that it only uses pretty much exactly what it needs to make the part. On the contrary, having other manufacturing processes in your home would be impractical. I mean, just look at this lathe. I just want to make a note and say that 3D printing has been very enjoyable for me to use. I mean, a 3D printer melting a spool of plastic and laying it in exactly the right spot can create an actual part. How awesome is that? It gets even more interesting if you can design the parts yourself. At this point, you are turning an idea into an actual part. Okay, let's be honest. Most of you probably already know that you can use a 3D printer right at home to make a part. You're probably less aware, however, of how it can be used for educational purposes. Now, I don't just mean math. I mean that it can teach you some pretty important life skills. A study has been conducted to see the learning outcomes of middle schoolers when they used 3D printing. They learned to take risks, to persevere through problems, to learn from their mistakes, and also how to think deeply through problems. This is what I think many people lack today. Critical thinking does not only apply to mathematics, research, science, or engineering. Anyone should have that ability to think critically. 3D printing is a great medium to cultivate that. I certainly benefited from working with my 3D printer. I learned a lot about myself, how to think, and even as someone who prides themselves in working hard, how to persevere. Learning aside, what if I told you that 3D printing allows many more people to have the ability to start their own businesses? All right. Picture this, you want to start a company that produces physical parts. However, when looking at manufacturing techniques, you see the high prices of large industrial manufacturing machines. You can't possibly spend thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands to get those machines just to make your part. Not at this stage. Not to mention the difficulty of learning and using them. One option would be to take out a loan to acquire that machinery. Well, if you fail, then congratulations, you're bankrupt. If only there was a machine that was cheap and simple enough that can be used to make plastic parts. Well, of course, that would be 3D printing, which can be used in various ways to start a business. Of course, you can print final production parts to sell depending on the use case. For example, uh, this is a final production part that I bought from a company used for flight simulation, if you're curious. As you can see, this is 3D printed. You could see the little print lines right there, and it works pretty well. It gets the job done. Cheaper 3D printers from a few hundred to a thousand dollars can be used for lower complexity devices. However, there are metal 3D printers that are a few thousand dollars that can print much stronger parts. On top of all that, 3D printing is more flexible in the shapes that it can print, while conventional methods would either have very complicated processes or would not be able to manufacture it at all. The low cost and flexibility of 3D printers means that it is perfect for manufacturing parts for a startup. Manufacturing parts for final production is not the only use. One business had used 3D printing as a marketing tool by printing models to advertise their product, in addition to a manufacturing tool. At this point, because 3D printing is so versatile, if you can creatively think of a way to use 3D printing to your advantage, then the sky's the limit. Okay, so we can agree that saving money is great. We all love it. Luckily, 
3D printed toys are much cheaper than their off-the-shelf counterparts. You might dismiss toys as an unimportant item to save money on, but realize the fact that if cost savings can apply to toys, it can apply to any other item. You can have a return on investment of a thousand percent from a 3D printer if you print one part a week for five years. That means that you can save around 900% of the printer's value, which if we assume is around a typical lower-end desktop printer's value of around $200, is about $1,800. Realistically though, no one's going to be printing one part a week for five years. A simple example would be that a $16 chess set can be printed for only two bucks. As with anything, nothing is perfect. There are negatives to 3D printing. One is a respiratory issue when using a 3D printer. A man came into the doctor's office reporting that he has breathing issues and chest tightness. He had just started his 3D printing business, but was a tad too enthusiastic and had 10 3D printers in a room that was a thousand cubic feet. For context, think of a 10 by 10 by 10 box. The man had a past history of asthma when he was younger, which died out until now. The study found that after the man had switched from ABS to PLA, two 3D printer filaments used only five printers at a time and for good measure used an air purifier, his problems were resolved. Now, I also had problems with asthma when I was younger, but I did not have those same problems when I was using my printer. I did, however, have headaches and coughing, but that was because I burned PLA with a soldering iron to try and plastic weld parts together. I definitely was supposed to do that with a gas mask. However, when just printing the part, there was no issue. The point is, it was user error, both in my case and the man's case. That goes with anything, really. If you use a tool wrong, you may harm yourself to varying degrees. Okay, so there are minor health issues, but on the other hand, 3D printing has been used for major medical benefits. 3D printers have been used for personalized surgery and treatment, customized surgical tools and prosthetics, bioprinting, and the list goes on. I don't need to say more, it speaks for itself. 3D printed firearms, this also speaks for itself. What doesn't speak for itself is the fact that it is not the 3D printer's fault. Let me explain. Before 3D printers, there were still guns. By extension, there were still gun crimes. Now, think about a time before firearms existed. There would have still been violence. Unfortunately, violence would always exist. My point is that 3D printing and firearms are tools. How a person uses them is what causes the violence in the first place. Imagine if someone hit someone else with a hammer and severely hurt the other person. Would you blame the person or the hammer? In that perspective, the person is to blame. 3D printing and tools in general are just force multipliers of our actions. We can choose to use the tools to aid us in doing good or bad, but the main cause comes down to the person. Now, there are concerns of people copying companies' products and stealing their designs with 3D printing. I mean, those companies had it coming with those high prices, am I right? Jokes aside, the issue is similar to my previous point about 3D printed firearms. 3D printers don't spontaneously copy products. People do. Also, 3D printers aren't even able to copy the product. They just follow instructions on a 3D printer file to fabricate it. You'd need a scanner to get the product's dimensions copied into a file for 3D printing. But again, the scanner does not magically steal companies' intellectual property. People do. On the other hand, companies have used 3D printing for prototyping to help create new innovations along with producing parts. Any highly capable and versatile technology or tool has its implications. There will have to be laws and regulations put in place to prevent the wrongdoers from taking advantage of it. However, the positive possibilities for 3D printing could be endless. What we see now is just the beginning. The potential is huge. The best part is that this technology is not limited to the wealthy. Anyone can have access to it, and anyone can learn to use it and benefit from it. Now, I know I have and will benefit more from it in the future. If you are interested in 3D printing and looking for how to start, then this video is for you. See you in the next one.